Hello, everybody, and welcome to Nobody Listens to Me Anyway, a podcast about anything that I want to talk about whenever I want to talk about. And today we're going to be talking about sex. So we're going to have some warnings as this is going to be a mature style stream. We're going to be mentioning kinks, approaching sex in a healthy way, exploring your sexuality and figuring out who you are and what you like, and maybe even talking a little bit about our past experiences as well. Uh, If you've never been here before, this is my brand new podcast. It is available on Amazon Music, Apple Music, Spotify, and all the audio files are also put on YouTube. So go ahead and check those out because they're fantastic. And there's some really cool topics in there that a lot of people have already reached out to me about how cool they are and how helpful they are. So maybe you should be listening to what I'm talking about, even though nobody listens to me anyway. But my name is Clucky. If you're new here, Welcome. If you're not new and you're a regular, awesome. Great. Today we have a new guest, my friend Lunar Eternal, who is a Twitch streamer and content creator extraordinaire who streams for far too long, in my personal opinion. 17 hours, 8 hours, 7 hours, and they claim to only stream for 4 hours, but we'll talk about it. They're a huge advocate for health and wellness, just as I am. I went to school for uh, physical therapy and exercise science, but they are more into holistic health and stuff like that, so it's a good health balance conversation, but we're going to be talking about sex, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things. I can't sing. All right. Hi, Lunar. (laughs) Lucky. (laughs) I don't know why you guys let me sing on cameras, on mics. Because it's great. It's something. Because we enjoy your presence. (laughs) I don't know. Hi, Lunar. Thanks for joining me for sex stuff. (laughs) I mean. (laughs) Listen. But yes. You're so welcome. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Sex is a interesting conversation because it's approached in such a interesting way in our society, whether it's shamed upon for sex workers or barely touched upon in our own education systems that growing up you have to do so much self-exploration and a lot of the times you have to do it in a private setting because you're too nervous or afraid to ask for help or ask questions because it can get a weird rep and people look at you weird which is stupid because sex is a very natural thing in our life and it's very normal and if you have access to information and access to asking for help and things like that it can end up being a more enjoyable experience slash more safe experience and you don't make as many mistakes and you may find out who you are and what you like even faster and it's definitely a weird thing in our society that we just like hey no one talks about sex it's like why well and i think that's like part of the issue too is because like parents like it it starts from when you're young because parents are like i don't want to talk to my kids about sex that's weird i don't want to do it i don't like want anything to do with it there's the whole thing like oh did you get the sex talk oh did you like did your parents tell you this blah 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 blah. and then people like start like they shell up they get like they go in on themselves because they're like i don't know and then there's these people who seem like they're super experienced when they're probably not at all and then there's people that are like oh, like, I don't feel like I can talk about this with anyone and I don't know how to express, like, what has been happening with me. And I think, like, that's part of, like, where a lot of society's, like, views on sex have stemmed from. It's it's definitely a weird topic to approach as a child. And I know a lot of friends who grew up in more religious households, so, like, they definitely didn't get any experience in their childhood but then as soon as they hit adulthood and they got that freedom it's like it's an explosion of sexual exploration and it's great i'm glad people are getting to explore but even someone like me who i have only slept with partners i've been in a relationship with so and in my experiences my past three partners before my current boyfriend um we're not healthy and abusive, so it's never like you're... 
enjoying the sexual experience enough to want to try more. It's more of a, I was tolerating the sexual experience to move on to the next thing. But that's a whole nother topic. And that's already in my other podcast episode of no one Lix- listens to the victim. But I'm not going to repeat that because there's a lot of trigger warnings in that conversation. But it was more like tolerating the sexual experience in order to just get it done as opposed to maybe now with my partner that I'm very healthy with that I'm like oh I kind of want to try things but I don't know how and I don't know what things to do and it's it's a hard conversation to be like hey do you want to handcuff me I don't know if I'd like it would you like it is this a weird topic is it weird to be nervous about asking you to handcuff me and it's and that's a completely like valid concern like it is a weird topic to approach with a significant other especially someone who you don't like you haven't had those kinds of conversations with before and but i think that's a lot of like what goes into being like okay like i feel comfortable in this relationship and that's like a very like healthy way to approach it which like yes it's weird yes it's awkward but if you are in a relationship where you even like want to approach that topic that's still a healthy start. Like, so going up to your partner and just saying, hey, like, I want to try something, um, kind of like broaching the subject and then just being like, hey, this is something I want to try. Are there smaller steps ahead of that that could possibly help you want to try that as well? Or there's also the possibility that your partner is just like, yes, I want to try it. But there's always those like littler steps that you can take to like kind of figure out like where you're both at on the scale to figure out like how you approach a certain say kink uh idea fantasy whatever and when it comes to that there could be the scenario of like one partner again like you said asking for wanting to try other things and the other partner may be having been more sheltered and not knowing what those kinks are so like how do you find out what is your happy middle ground? How do you go like, hey, you want to try something new? And your partner's like, yeah, sure, let's try something new. And then you're like, okay, what do you want to try? And they're like, I don't know anything. Those are also like super awkward conversations. So like that's a situation where like me and my now husband like had, we went through that because there was the whole like session of like, okay, like, we just started dating. We went through the little honeymoon phase where you're like fucking all the time and but you're not really trying anything Sex else. Like and, rabbits. Yeah. <laughs> and but you're not really trying anything else. And then you like hit this wall, like five years together. And yeah, you're gonna hit a wall where you're like, I don't really want to do the same thing all the time. And for us, what that took, and I know this is gonna sound kind of weird, was like, okay, so like let's start by like maybe we watch porn together and see like what excites both of us or one of us and see how like the other one is comfortable with it which like that's oh, a lot for some people sometimes yeah but also like at the same time it helped us like kind of sit there and just be like okay so like this kind of turns me on or it can be a way to like show people how your partner like how you're looking at sex and the things you want to try and showing them What's the word that I'm looking for? I can't think of the word that I'm looking for. Your ideas without putting them immediately in the situation to kind of like gauge like, are you comfortable with this? Or would you want to try something else? Yeah, I mean, I actually with one of my exes did watch porn with him at one point. So I totally understand. I at that time wasn't as interested in sex so i was just super uncomfortable with the whole experience he just wanted to watch it and i don't know it was a weird time for me i don't (laughs) mind the idea of it like i've I've done it and i would do it again if needed but that was a weird time because i was so not interested in it and that's like the thing is like you don't know that like your partner may just say yes, but they want to please you, but they may not actually be all that into the idea of watching this or trying this. But then there's all those experiences of like simply, obviously there's tons of 
tons of different positions. There's using tools. That's not the right word. Toys. toys. Using toys. That's <laughs> the word. Um, and obviously there's some very difficult things, including shibari, which is a very hard thing to do but also you should be paying very close attention to safety precautions when you do things like that because you don't want to hurt your partner now there is a lot of talk about how some kings come out of your childhood trauma but that's uh yeah so approaching those in a manner of finding out things for about yourself is um unique to say the yes. least just a little bit but like and that just it always it's always at least for me gonna circle back to the conversation like as awkward as it is like no matter what it is like kind of approaching things with a okay like this is what I want to try. I want to have a conversation about it so that we can figure out. And then it's a, especially if you're in like a healthy relationship, more than likely your partner is going to be like, okay, I'm either uncomfortable th with this or I'm willing to try this, but can we start like with something slower? Like don't just jump straight into handcuffing someone. Maybe, maybe try like, oh, like let me like tie your hands kind of loosely with like a tie or something and like do it like, so for them, if it's like a them thing and they're like, I don't want to hurt you, mm. then that takes out that part of it. And then a lot of stuff like that, like approaching things in like smaller steps rather than just jump into the one thing you're thinking about doing can help both partners realize like, oh, do I actually like this? Do I actually like being tied up? Do they enjoy me being tied up? It can also help your partner who may be a little on edge about it be like, oh, they enjoy this maybe that's something i can like get into because it helps them as well like and it's it goes both ways and it's always going to be like a weird conversation because people are different everybody's different everyone's going to have different kinks everyone's going to have like different ideas fantasies uh, related to sex and it's always going to come back to that conversation especially with your partner that's actually a funny topic of like maybe your partner isn't actually quite as interested in tying you up but you're interested in being tied up so they learn to quote love it not in a sense to like fake it to make it but they they're like i enjoy seeing my partner happy so it helps mm -hmm. them this is actually comes back to a topic i asked on twitch a couple months ago uh, we were having a date night event and Somebody asked, uh, oh, no, it was a confession stream. Somebody confessed yeah. to, like, blowjobs are actually overrated. and I was they, there for that. <laughs> they mentioned that they would actually rather not have a blowjob but to give their partner head because they're more satisfied watching their partner feel Being euphoria excited. and experience it and then like squirm and smile and they're like that is more arousing to them than actually giving head now i'm not saying <laughs> blowjobs are actually overrated there's plenty of you who enjoy them and that's totally fine if that's your thing but i was in a room with talking to a bunch of friends about this and i was really surprised because i was just like in all social media and all porn it always starts with like 20 minutes of blowjobs and they're like yeah yep. put it in my mouth put it in my Ooh. mouth and i'm like okay and then when you yeah. talk to not p stars uh most men that. are like wow i really want to see my partner go at it i'm like ooh, when she's feeling it when they them are feeling it ooh, as opposed to like ah a nice handy's fine but i'd rather go at her or they them exactly and like that's like a part of it is like you're talking to real people you're not just like oh this is what some elitist guy who's directing this thinks everyone likes because that's not necessarily true and like yes and that goes back to like the yes watching porn together can help you guys explore things but that's never going to be like the end answer 
Like there is no end answer to anything. It is always going to be like a, let's have a conversation. Let's talk about this because things like that arise. And like, that's why talking to real humans about sex is important. <laughs> And that's the scary thing about our society, because even I, which is the reason we have this podcast right now, was like, hey, I have a question about sex and I really want to talk to some ladies about it. And a bunch of my beautiful friends were like, yeah, I'll talk, I'll talk. And I was like, you know what? This is actually a weird thought is that I'm afraid to ask a question about sex. Why? Why, why should I be afraid to ask? It could make it safer for me. It could make it more enjoyable for me. Why Why am I afraid? We shouldn't be afraid. It's such an annoying stipulation that it's like has to be like a, ooh, she's talking about sex. Well, like, cool. Like, that's the other thing. Like, I grew up in a really, really, really small town. So, like, first of all, it was like the kind of like small little hick town in the middle of the Midwest where like, oh, guys can talk about sex. Guys can have locker room talk. But as soon as a girl did it, you were you were a slut. So like it it comes back to that a lot for me, which is why I was so happy when I met my best friend, because she would like she'd always like talk to me about things like this. She'd be like. If I had a question or like I was struggling, she'd be like, well, it, at one point it started with like, well, how's your sex life? You seem really stressed lately. Like, are you okay? Like, are you and David okay? Because he, at that point, my relationship had been going on for years. And she was like, sometimes like, A, sex can help relieve stress. B, if you guys aren't feeling like you're actually like, talking to each other or like um connecting on a like in that way anymore that can lead to like other feelings being elevated as well because you live together you are a unit you guys are something like sex is a very important part of your little like hive and that's how i started talking to her about all of this and then it became a thing for me where oh i can actually talk to people about this and this is something that people should feel like they can talk to others about that's another thing, actually. Sex doesn't always start in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. It starts at home. Now, this could be an example of just simply living with your partner. If your partner's not helping around the house or not paying bills or they're slumming around or and only one person's doing everything and then they try to initiate sex with you and you don't want to have it, well, sex doesn't just mean sex. It means taking care of your partner whether it is doing the dishes and in partnership with that the idea of men helping women around the house when it's their duty to also take care of the house because it's a two-person house is so stressful <laughs> to talk about i'm like well i help my wife around the house no you also exist in that house take care of it i don't understand not... why that's such a hard conversation for this society who <laughs> are helper no you're partners you're married <sighs> it is it not is a not... one person job and this is what leads to you having a healthy sex life because your partner's like well the dishes are done and he did the lawn and the va everything's vacuumed and the pets are taken care of and now it's just me and my best friend spending time together and now i actually want to be intimate instead of him being like let's get intimate and I'm like, well, my dishes are dirty, my floors are dirty, the cat's litter boxes haven't been cleaned, and you want to have sex right now? No. 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 And, like, that goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning with, like, people being scared to talk about it is because there's this huge, like, male stipulation on sex where, oh, men can talk about it, men can want it whenever they want, but as soon as a woman does, like... So it makes it extremely hard for us as females to have those conversations. And, it, and that stems from like your entire life because there's so much that people like society will put on you just because you have a fucking vagina. 
<laughs> I had an experience with this with my ex is he always wanted to have sex. It was on his terms. He was interested in it and I had to have sex. And if I didn't, he would pout and he would get angry and then not talk to me. So we went on a vacation one time and I was like, I'm really excited to spend just private time with him. So I bought this really cute lingerie set and I wore it out to him and he said what the hell are you doing why are you wearing that go take it off i don't want to have sex i don't know why you put that on take it off i don't want you what are you doing take it off and so then i've never felt comfortable in my entire life ever wearing lingerie in front of somebody <laughs> i had to after like until my new partner but i had to like really be like are you sure it's okay if i wear lingerie are you sure like it's i'm sorry is it weird should i not wear lingerie maybe i just won't wear it is it weird do you like it is it weird is it weird don't hate me is it gonna make you less attracted to me because he just like screamed at me when i came out in lingerie and that's absolute bullshit <laughs> it was <laughs> awkward for my mental health <laughs> Oh, I'm sure. Like, you were put in a situation where you're like, I am trying to do something for my partner because I want to please my partner and I want to see my partner excited. And then he literally just took that feeling and went, fuck no. <laughs> yep. He literally was like, you look stupid. Why are you, what are you wearing? And I was like, it's, it's lingerie, but um, I'll go. Oh, um, no, not. I'll and, go like, cry in that, the bedroom now. And then that, like, kills your whole mood when you were just trying to, like, reciprocate oh yeah then he again? wanted to have sex later and i was like yay yeah, no. <laughs> yay no fuck that great <laughs> yeah it was oh. it was not a good time for my mental health but now it's in a better relationship but that's where we get to know what do men really like? What do women really like? And the co conversation of, like, we mentioned before of maybe your partner doesn't love your kink, but they do it to please you, and men actually wanting to give head as opposed to receive it. But there was also, I had a friend once who liked to be, um, like to be rough in bed. They like to be thrown around and spanked and all sorts of stuff like that. And their partner sweetest himbo on the planet was like i can't lay hands on you i can't touch you and they're like i can't get aroused if you're not slightly rough with me and it took that partner quite a bit to like learn that choking in not the blocking the airways sense but the the blood flow and getting rough wasn't getting violent it was just moving your partner around quickly and with force and more of a dominating presence as opposed to an intimidating presence and like that's a, like another situation that can bring up the whole subject of like doms versus subs like there's al always going to be like maybe not but personally i feel like there's always at least a slight like edge to everyone like Sometimes you want to be the dominator, sometimes you want to be the sub. And, like, that's okay, but that's also, like, another, like, situation where it leads back to having that conversation with your partner. I had a because partner who mentioned always trying to tell me to wanted it was he would be like take control you do this you take care of it you take care of it and again i didn't have a whole lot of sexual experience slash i am not i have a very dominant personality i have a very dominant way of doing things online and in life when it comes to sex i am not a dominant and so they were like yelling at me to like take control do this do that do this and i was like ah no He's like, well, why not? And I was like, because I am a bottom. <laughs> I'm a... Well, leads to the whole talk about, like, don't yell at your partner to do something. If you want to try something, like, you can talk about it in the moment, but also just, you can also, like, kind of guide people. Like, and that can help. If that makes sense. So, like, there was one situation I was in at one point in time where it was kind of like that. But instead of, like, yelling at me, said human, 
just like flipped so that I was on top, which like you, he kind yes, he kind of forced me into the situation, but it also did kind of help me realize that like, I enjoy this. Mm -hmm. I enjoy being that person and I enjoy feeling like dominating sometimes. But also he didn't yell at me. He yes. guided me guide your partner, like help them realize like, Hey, I enjoy this. Instead of just being like, no, you have to do this. You should do this, do this, do this, do this, do it gently. There is a very gently. distinct way <laughs> of approaching things with guiding and helping your partner to do something as opposed to forcing their head down on your dick or yelling at them versus being like, Hey, do you want to go on top? It's it's the way you approach your partner shouldn't be the same way you approach someone in the street. Now, I'm not saying you should be mean to people in the street, but I'm saying you need to watch what you say to your partners because people are sensitive and that's not a terrible thing. But you shouldn't just be saying things to say things. You need to think about the repercussions that they can have. Yelling at your partner to right. get on top and then them not wanting. Now they're going to feel very inadequate when it comes to sex. Yelling at your partner when they wear lingerie, they're never going to want to do a kink for you ever again. Versus being like, hey, I really appreciate it and you look really hot. And maybe giving them a couple kisses or something and be like, I'm just not, you know, I'm not in the mood sure. right now. But like, maybe we should try it later. Versus being yeah. like, take that off. So now if yeah. you would have said that to me, I'm not living my life seven years after this relationship, still scared to wear lingerie in front of a partner versus like, oh, he just wasn't in the mood and that's okay. Like, we just had a long drive. It's all good. Like, I was a little bit proactive about getting into it. I was just like a little excited about wearing my lingerie and that's fine. That was more on me and not in a negative way, but he approached it in a healthy manner. And so... That even comes out to, like, anger issues and, like, lashing out when you have an upset moment in your relationship and you may, like, yell at your partner for not doing the dishes but saying things like, I hate you, you're so frustrating. Like, those words stay. And you may think, why does your partner not want to have sex with you anymore? Like, well, last week you told me you hate me. And they're like, well, I don't mean I hate you. You know, it's just, like, a thing that people say. It's like, no, you said you hate me. And now I don't want to have sex with you. I am not interested in trying anal now because you told me you hate me. So what, you only like me for sex? Is that what your opinion on me is? Am I just your sex object? So many relationships like that before I found David. So mm. I got to a point where I was like, oh, people only like me for sex. That's it. That is what I am to people is yep. I am sex and that is it. And that was fucking rough. Yeah, <laughs> man. I rough. got used to being used for sex for so long. I was like, oh, they don't care about anything I do. And all they're like is just have sex with me. And another thing when it comes to sex is aftercare. I had so much experience with a sexual partner where they would force me to have sex with them. I didn't want to. And then they would throw me away when they were done. Like, I would try to cuddle a little bit, and they'd be like, no, I'm hot. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Don't touch me. Get off of me. And I have had such a hard time recovering from this one, but my partner told me that he does not find me attractive after he has sex with me. You could see my face right now, because then don't fucking have sex with you. <laughs> Find someone else who's into that. <laughs> I, that goes back to the whole, like, being the intimidator instead of just dominator. Mm -hmm. And that's not okay. <laughs> yes, I understand that there are people that are into that, but at a certain point, it still has to be consensual. It always has to be consensual. And if your partner is not into that and doesn't like that in the bedroom, respect it. And that's all there is to it. Just respect that. Yeah. 
So like name calling, people do like being called names, like bitch, slut, and that's totally fine. But you have to mm -hmm. be okay with being like, hey, call me a bitch in the bedroom. Call me a slut in the bedroom and not take it personally. He wasn't actually trying to do something to take it personally. He just genuinely did not find me attractive once he had sex with me. And I had to learn because I saw it on TikTok or Twitter. It was like, when men don't have sex after men have sex with you, they don't find you attractive anymore. I was like, oh, I guess that's a normal thing that men don't like you after you have sex with them. And then I started talking to like some beautiful guy friends that I have now and very healthy guy friends that I have now. And they were like, what? And like my current partner's like, no, I want you to like cuddle me after. And I was like, oh, you're not going to throw me in the trash can when I'm done. And he was like, what? I was like, Oh, is that not, is that not normal? You're not going to just degrade me and tell me I'm ugly and throw me away? We're not doing that? He was like, why would we do that? And I was like, okay, now I have trauma. I have sexual trauma. Thanks. Yep. Yep. And then it happens and it sucks that it happens. And it's also like something where you have to like think about like, oh, so what did they go through? to make them feel like behaving like that, especially in the bedroom, is okay. Like, <laughs> it, like, there's so many different, like, levels of trauma that can lead to how you behave in the bedroom. Because it is a very intimate time. It is, like, it is a time where you are bare. You are naked in more senses than just physically naked. You are mentally naked, you're emotionally naked, like, there's, there's so much that goes into it and having to like, think about those interactions not only can make people feel awkward, but it can also lead to like feelings and emotions and traits coming out that you may not have known about your partner before. And yes, there are so many ways to learn that your partner is very different in the bedroom than they are in person and you have to find out what they like and what you like in a healthy way now if we're saying that maybe we don't want to watch porn to discover new experiences what other options are there to feel like okay we do missionary we do dougie we do all this and that's fine but like what else can we try and where do i learn that i don't want to watch porn where do i go what do i do oh there's that's another good question it can be like there's books there are books you can read there are books that are geared towards like female pleasure that like you can look at those you can find podcasts you can find friends to kind of talk to to be like hey like i kind of want to try this but i'm not sure how to approach it and that also leads into the fact like having those good friends who are willing to talk to you about those things it also can be something where, like, guiding your partner as well when you're already in the bedroom. And you can say, like, hey, I kind of want to, like, maybe if you, like, flip me over. Or, hey, do you want to try this? And, like, being in the heat of the moment, sometimes that can also, like, help keep that excitement up while you're trying to try something and then if it doesn't work it doesn't work mm -hmm. and that's okay like but there are multiple different ways to like look into the things that you may want to try there are multiple different ways to explore new kinks or ideas but a lot of it is always going to take research and a lot of it is always going to take conversation whether that's with your partner or with friends with uh people you've met who have had those experiences now, how do I approach this? I want to get better at a specific thing for my partner. And yes, practice makes perfect and you and your partner can do it over and over again. But our anniversary is yeah. coming up and I want to surprise him with how good I am at doing one of these new kinks or a blow job or a hand job and i just want to get better at it how do i get better without maybe doing it with my partner how do i approach being like maybe i'm not very good at being on top how do i get better at it and being like hey look what i learned how to do and i show it to him 
question. Um, I feel like going through that would be, it would take a lot of, and this is going to sound really weird, possibly either um, talking to people to like figure out like, hey, I want to do this. How do you suggest I go about it? It can also be something like, oh, like <clears throat> building up your self-confidence, like practicing the motion, like say either in a mirror on, I don't know if it's a hand job, a fucking zucchini. I don't know. Um, <laughs> like it's, and like, yes, practice makes perfect, but at the same time, like sex is such a weird thing to discuss, especially if you're trying to surprise someone. It can be, like, little things like, oh, like, look, try and find, like, an article that says, like, here's some tips for this, or here's, like, this for this. And it's it's a very weird thing to ask because there's not really a good way to go about that, mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Like, the only thing you can do is, like, really try to put yourself in the situation and go from there like <laughs> which is really awkward to say because a lot of people do want to surprise their partners with like hey i can do this hey i can do this yes but at a certain point there is the is there actually a way to get better without actually doing the act mm -hmm. especially when it comes to stuff in the bedroom so how do I add sex toys to my relationship? How do I just add them? Ooh. Just just add them in. Yeah, why not? <laughs> now I want to add sex toys. Um, I think, okay, so I think how David and I ended up doing it was, like, he kind of approached me with, like, I enjoyed being tied up. I like being tied up. That is something I enjoy. That is something he enjoys doing. Um... And then it became like a, oh, like, I want to try this. So it became like the smaller, the smaller the item, if that makes sense, like the less like um, stimulating it is, the easier it is to integrate, if that makes sense. So trying things like, um, oh, well, I want to, okay, you know, like the, the um, Hi, you're going to learn a lot about Lunar here in a second. Okay, um, this is a sex so, talk. <laughs> tell me. Um, so, like, feathers. Like, that oh. feeling, like, little sensation. I forgot. Um, I, <laughs> I really like it having, like, the back of my neck kiss. I love that feeling. It sends, like, that little, like, tingle down your spine, you know? Oh, it's so feathers, good. Yes. <laughs> feathers Woo. can give you, like, that same sort of feeling without it, like, actually being a a kiss so like taking that and like having them like run it along your neck like down write your that collarbone down, write that like down. tracing tracing your back like tracing all of those like little spots that they like know normally get you but only doing it with a feather i just had an awakening so like that's, <laughs> so, like, that's like a good one to like kind of start with and like that also leads back to the like oh I feel like for a lot of people who use sex toys, a lot of it can go back to, and like, I'm not saying this is everyone. I'm just saying like, in my personal opinion, in my experience, using sex toys can lead to like, oh, I am the partner who likes to watch my partner mm. in that euphoric state. And I feel like that's an important thing to kind of take in when you are kind of like, I want to try to introduce these things but I'm not really sure how to. So I always feel like the smaller you start, the better. So like, say um, you like being handcuffed, but your partner isn't so sure about that. Try being blindfolded. It's still a little bit of a sensory deprivation, but it's a different one that isn't necessarily for your partner hurting you, quote unquote. Yes. Yeah. Like, Starting with those, like, little steps to do the littler things and then, like, continuing up. So, like, you can start with a, with a feather for, like, that tingling, that sensation, and then move up to, like, a smaller vibrator or a, like, I don't, I don't know how to describe 
like what I'm thinking of. Like, you know how, okay, you can get different size dildos, okay? Yes. There's all different kinds of them. Starting with like a small one that's just like a little itty bitty, like the size of your finger or something that you can turn, yeah, that you can like turn it up hands. or down. A, t- a tiny hand. I got tiny hands. <laughs> a tiny hands. hand. It's not gonna do it. much. Tiny vibrator. <laughs> um, but like that's the thing. People think it won't do that much, but it it can, mm-hmm. dependent on how you use it. Like you can turn, you can turn them up. You can turn them down. Um, it's the same as like building that sensation and building the like, Oh, I like this or I don't like this. It's, it's a weird topic and it's a weird one that is definitely one where you need to start smaller. You're always going to have to start smaller and kind of work your way up, especially if your partner doesn't really know if they're comfortable with it or not. You could have a partner that you didn't even know was into sex toys and they just didn't bring them out because they didn't know if you'd be into it. Yeah. Now, is there a small version for adding in, like, this is going to be more intense, but more, like, adding in, like, whips and paddles. Is there a starter way for adding that in or would that just be, like, maybe spanking or something along those lines? is actually a conversation I've had with one of my best friends um, because she's very into that. Mm -hmm. Um, And it, it is a, you start with spanking, Mm -hmm. you work your way up, you start lightly, you get a little bit harder, you add in paddles, you add in whips. Like it's always going to be like that little bit of a build um, because it helps you realize like, Oh, where your line is. Most people are always going to have a line with something. And if you start small, at least you know you can go up. And then you know, like, where your limit is, Mm -hmm. if that makes sense. Yeah, And, like, finding that limit to talk to your partner about. And, like, if especially if you guys are doing it together, can make a sexual experience so much better just because they're like, okay, I know where their limit is for this. So I can do this, this, and this to lead up to that limit. So you're saying not every version wants to be Christian grade in Fifty Shades of Grey. I shouldn't yeah. just immediately hook someone to a wall and slap them please with a don't. paddle? <laughs> yeah, please don't. <laughs> hmm. Interesting conversation, huh? Hmm. Please don't. <laughs> now, there are some people who do want to go to that extreme immediately, but maybe you should talk to your partner first. Exactly. Always talk to your partner first. Because that's um, how you're going to approach it health- healthfully. There was some other topic I wanted to get across with sex. And now I can't remember. That's okay. But, that's um, <laughs> So things that we definitely are hitting on right now is make sure you know how to talk to your partner. Communication mm-hmm. is a massive thing with your relationship, but also with sex, being able to approach your partner in a way that's, hey, I want to try this and not yelling at them. Tone of voice is very significant. Approaching them and making sure they know what names they want to be called or degradation or non-degradation, whether it's mm-hmm. appreciation or not. You need to know how to talk to your partner. Being comfortable with your person is the easiest way to increase your sex life. And yes. Other ways to do it are building, so guiding your partners, adding small sex toys like feathers, small vibrators, and building up to whips, paddles, all Her. sorts like that. <laughs> and like, and that's part of it too. Is like, yes, there are different like kind of sex toys that like certain people will be into, and some won't. So it's always going to be like that. Start here, build to here. And some people are going to hit the line before they hit the thing they actually thought they might like. And that's okay. At least, like, you tried and you figured it out, so now you can communicate that to your partner. Is there a way to properly approach role play? How do we introduce role play if you're feeling you want to try something new and you want to do a new scenario is there an easy way to build into asking your partner obviously communication is key but 
personally, I think the best way to do that is to maybe like not start with it in the bedroom. Start with it by like, oh, so like, hey, let's go out tonight and let's pretend like we're meeting in the bar for the first time. Approach mm. it, start there, or do like a, um, oh, let's like approach it like, um, I forgot where I was going with that sentence. <laughs> I don't know where I was going with that. I had an idea and then I went. (laughs) I do like the idea of starting it outside of the bedroom. Mm -hmm. A lot of, like we said, a lot of the stuff, sex doesn't start in the bedroom. So adding in meeting at the bookstore, meeting at the bar and being like, oh my gosh, Mm -hmm. hi, you're really cute. Can I get your number? Starting, never stop dating your partner. Always continue to flirt with them and role play even something like that isn't necessarily even a kink it's just having fun exactly something that needs to be talked about an approach where it's like oh you do all these strange things it's like no we're just having fun we're just like joking around like hey Mm -hmm. cute stranger at the bar do you come here often and they're like yeah no i have a girlfriend (laughs) <laughs> but God, you gotta play along it's about having laughs yeah. about having fun and like building into something like that could awaken the fact that maybe you want to try damsel in distress or some sort of scenario exactly. in the bedroom and it can also like help you like especially for both partners realize like oh do i like fi- do i find this awkward do i not feel like comfortable doing this and then if you're starting it outside of the bedroom at least you realize that before you get put in a situation where you would be uncomfortable and wouldn't be able to get it up or whatever because you don't know what like you don't enjoy what's happening Mm -hmm. i think that's all the sex stuff that i can think of at the moment um have you ever considered going to a strip club with your partner i did at one point um however it was i didn't actually go and mm-hmm. the reason we didn't is because my partner hates strip clubs mm. um and i actually like kind of like i asked him why and he was like it's not that like um he said it's not because of the girls it's because of the like environment mm. around the girls he doesn't like being in that situation where he feels like um everybody's just there because these girls are naked they're only there to do this and he's like I, I, if like someone was gonna do that he'd want to like actually support yeah and like it's not just be like oh yeah take your top off he's like i want to like we've gone to burlesque shows together he yeah. fucking loves burlesque shows hates strip clubs mm-hmm. but he's like it's so it's like this weird i don't really know how to explain it there's plenty of men who want to have an actual connection with the person taking their top off or to be in a and i'm not saying strippers don't have incredible skill and incredible talent but sometimes they want to see it in an artistic fashion which is like burlesque where they put on this huge dramatic show and they're kind of telling a story with their crazy costumes and everything and so some people do want to have a genuine connection with a person where that comes into like the conversation of being asexual or demisexual where it's like Mm -hmm. you can see somebody naked and be like that's a naked body but if you see your partner naked you're like oh my (laughs) gosh because you have an actual emotional connection to the person who is naked as opposed to somebody being like here's my top and i'm like ah good yeah good boobs i guess as opposed to like seeing somebody i'm in love with i'm like i would do things to those yep (laughs) <laughs> so is there anything in conclusion you want to talk about with healthy relationship or summarize anything that you mentioned so far it just I think in summary a healthy relationship is not it's not always going to come down to what's happening in the bedroom it's not always going to come down to what's happening outside of the bedroom it is a combination and I think it's important to remember that it is a combination communication is always going to be key it, like there's nothing you can do in a relationship that isn't going to require communication, especially in a healthy one. Just remembering those things and then also remembering like, hey, my partner may not be into this when you do approach something and being okay with that and trying to find like a middle ground, I think is extremely important. 
because yes, obviously people are going to be different. They're going to have different kinks. They're going to have different ideas, but trying to find a way that you guys can please each other is going to be more important than just, I want to do this. This is what I want to do. You have to communicate with your partner and you have to want to actually find what they enjoy as well as you enjoy at the same time. Sex is an completely shared experience. You can't do it mm -hmm. one-sided. You both need to work at it. And I think that was a very helpful conversation for a lot of people out there. Um, and if you have any other questions or things that you want us to talk about related to sex or how to approach different types of kinks that we didn't mention or different scenarios, please let me know down in the comments. But we're going to clock out for this episode and um please check out the rest of my episodes follow me and lunar on social media everything will be linked in the description below check out my other podcasts if you've made it this far you're awesome tell me what you liked the best or don't i don't know it would be cool if you did because now you're feeling comfortable talking about sex and that's the whole point of this conversation but i'll see you in the next podcast thank you so much for joining me lunar welcome. Thank you for having me. And we'll see you next time. Bye-bye!